Okay, here we are, Phil Lindsay here with Pete Magazine. I'm joined by British boxing blogs, Andrew Newton. Not Andy Newton, we're all formal today because it's professional. It's a pleasure to be here, Phil. I'd like to thank you for giving me all of 10 minutes' notice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how we get on. It's all part of the experience, Andrew. So, so opening here, we've got Mark Taylor from Newcastle. He's had one fight with uh, last year. Uh, he's in the white and silver shorts. Orthodox fight. He's up against MJ Hall. It's it is Hall's tenth fight. He's lost all nine. Generally goes the distance, but he got stopped in the fourth round last time out. But a uh, good start from Taylor so far. Very aggressive from Taylor. He's a prospect I've been looking forward to seeing. To be honest, um, I've heard a lot about him from Matt Jobs, his trainer. I know Matt speaks very highly of him, and he, as you say, there he started very aggressively and looking to put it on Hall right from the start. But he's, he's you can you can see he's. He's fighting against a southpaw here, but he's there. Oh, it's a great shot. Turned that uppercut up, up beautifully there. And just before he landed that, he's trying to get his foot on the outside of uh, Hall, which is obviously what you want to do, being an orthodox against yeah. the southpaw. And that's allowed him to get away, as I say, as you've just said there, a lovely shot. Taylor's also the taller of the two. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if he tries to utilise that reach advantage. At the minute, he seems quite happy to get in close and look to do most of the work from in range. Yeah, well, he's, he's one of those boxers where you look at him, you think, keep it on the outside. You've, you've got the advantages, you've got the benefits, keep on the outside, on the end of your jab, but he can box on the inside as well. He seems to have a, a bit of an advantage in speed as well. Been first to the punch. Nice sort of shuffle of the feet there from yeah. Taylor. But he had a good amateur background, Taylor. And I was uh, I was talking with the, with these coaches earlier on, and what they've been trying to do is, although he can fight on the inside, they're trying to minimise that so that yes, do it when you have to do it, do it when your opponent forces you to do that, but don't do it voluntarily. We're, work on the, the, the advantages you have and, and, and hone those skills. That is something I like to see, to be honest. I think it's all too easy for boxers in there to get dragged into a bit of a war, the machismo comes yeah. out, and obviously by able to keep that distance, it just means it's a little bit more control, they're not going to be taking as much punishment, and obviously early in the career that will have an effect as they move on. And you're developing that ring generalship that is going to see you win titles at different levels further down the line if you master it. Well, of course, it's, it's another string to the bow, isn't it? Um, obviously, the more you have as a boxer in your locker, the more chance of success you, you're going to have. But still early days for Taylor. Like we say, he's, he's, he's shaped well in the first round here. He's... Paul hasn't won a fight, but he's been he's been against winning opposition every time he's he's been up a, uh, on the road there. And as you say, he's not one to get. Although he did get stopped in his last out, and he's he does seem quite durable. Yep. Uh, obviously, he's got through the first round there. But Taylor's having to work for it. He is. is. That's what the that's what his team will be looking for out of this fight. Exactly. He's, he's looked the busier, but as you say, he's had to sort of put the odds in to fight at a higher tempo and, and control the action. So if you were if you were in his corner there, what would you be looking for more from in the second round here? What would you be looking for him to do to build on that first round? I think similarly to what we've touched on there with um, keeping his distance a bit more, utilising the jab. He was throwing a jab and then sort of looking to wing his way in. Yeah. Maybe keeping him on the end of the jab, doubling it up, moving around the ring, maybe boxing from the outside a little bit more and and just being a bit more patient. Yeah. 
See Matty Job, Matty Job's talking them in the corner there. I think overall Matt will be pleased with the round. I say it's a, it's a clear round for Taylor there. He's obviously he's outworked him, outlanded him. Hasn't been in any sort of trouble at all, really. That's the thing. It's it's it must be a funny one for a coach because. In this sort of situation, he's, he's in a fight that he's expected to win against. If, if he was to lose this fight, it would be it would be a, a fairly large upset. So it's he's going to get the win, but you want more than that. You want you want whatever they've been working on in the gym. This, you want to see that out in, under the lights, don't you? Exactly that. There's going to be things there that Matt will have picked up on and probably be pleased if if Mark's implemented them. If there's anything they've been working on, and he hasn't done. He's going to be focusing specifically on that. He's whipped he in a right lovely uppercut, lovely he? uppercut again there. You can see he does like the let the leather let the leather go, doesn't he? Look that very fast hands out through a couple of punches. Looking for the uppercut again, not quite as close there. But even when he's thrown a lot of shots that don't look forced, he's not forcing them, they're flowing quite well. No, aren't he's they? very fluid with it, yeah. As I say, he's got seems to have natural speed with his hands. It doesn't look like he's planting his feet and really throwing the kitchen sink yeah. but they, they do look like they've got a nice bit of snap to them nice overhand right there just proving my point yeah the, again oh, what a lovely shot again he's, 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 he's going to time that perfectly soon isn't he to his credit all looking a bit more aggressive this round he's, he's trying to close the distance himself but he is eating some leather every time he does that well the thing with Hall here is you get a lot of the, what you call opponents or, or, or journeymen where they'll be the one that's moving away, they know how to survive, they know how to keep off the punch in line. Where, where Hall's actually coming forward here, so he's actually, he's in there trying to win the fight. He's not looking to survive. Well, this is it. Um, as you say, there's a lot of journeymen, obviously they make their career and not getting stopped and they're quite happy to lose every round, but... Hall seems to be. He's got Taylor backed up to the ropes there. He's looking to land his own shots. And the fact he's a southpaw as well is going to make it that little bit more awkward. I know, obviously, Taylor's had a, a fairly extensive amateur career, so he'll, he'll afford his fair share of southpaws, but it's still... It the, is. The bulk of your work is against orthodox fighters. It is a different sport as well, and no matter your amateur, how much amateur experience you do have, it's a different environment fighting as a pro. And yeah. From a prospect point of view, you want Taylor to be exposed to as many different styles as possible as he progresses and, and hopefully learns. Landed a good right hand again there. But again, Hall's he's putting the pressure on there. He's landed a few shots, but also he's looking to, to lean, lean on Taylor. Almost tie him up and just getting things a little bit scrappy there. Another round for Taylor there, but my immediate feedback on the first two rounds from Taylor is all of his power shots are coming from the right hand. But he's using the jab as a range finder, but he's not putting much pop on his left hand. And so, that's something that someone with his attributes, with the height and the reach advantage he's going to have, going back to the gym... That's what I'll be looking to do. I'll be looking to snap that jab that little bit more and work on, a, on a, a, a bit more pop on the jab. And that would actually stop Hall being able to get in into range as easily. Well, this is it. You, you've got the two types of jab, haven't you? You've got, as you've mentioned there, the range, find out where you're going to be tapping it out to try and set up your other shots. Maybe plant his feet a little bit more, thudding that left hand in, thudding the jab in, deterring Hall a little bit. Yeah. Because um, that... As you say, Taylor won the round, but there was a lot more ambition shown there by Hall, and Taylor's probably had to work a bit harder than he anticipated in the second. So it'll be interested to see just if anything does change in the third. You can hear so that Taylor's... Right, the right hand's there from all days. Well, this is it. You can hear Taylor's fans there singing in the background, and... Um, Again, that's another factor that, as an amateur, maybe doesn't have that much support. He's got, obviously, a lot of friends and family here. It must be very easy for a young prospect to want to load up on the right hand Absolutely. and get the job done. You want to put on a show. 
and, 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 and boxing at, 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 at any level you can't force it you have to let it flow you have to do the, this is exactly it. what's happened in the gym you know it's easier said than done but Taylor's got to detach himself from that keep his composure which he has done to his credit and he's landed another lovely right hand there he is he's timing that counter beautifully isn't he but again Hall's pressing on here this is it we've talked about him keeping the distance but it may be that his game plan is to allow Hall to come in and time him coming in with one of those power yeah. shots obviously we've, we've mentioned the uppercut a couple of times he's landed a right hand over the top there scored with a nice jab there did Taylor right in close but still managed to shorten the shot you can see some of the amateur pedigree as well the way he's just sort of trying to spin his way out yeah. of trouble and but he's also just buying himself there. time there as well isn't he he's very comfortable in the ring then. there comes Hall again though behind the turnbuckle for you there he is I'm just about seeing from my, <laughs> my angle there again the same Hall he's getting in close he's pressuring but I'm not sure how much he's having limited success yeah, how, much, how much effect he's having almost smothering his own work there but but again he's making Taylor work for the full three minutes at this rate but this is pro boxing this is it and hey he's oh. game as hell Hall absolutely he's landed a couple of nice shots there. again I think too close to really generate any power and any leverage on them but they're scoring shots there's, there's an argument that the signs he's forcing Taylor into his sort of fight here and well this this the first two rounds he would have had fairly comfortably for Taylor but this this round's fairly close this one again Taylor's not troubled but he hasn't really produced much of his own work in the third he's been stifled a little bit yeah. by Hall got some blood from the nose there from Hall as well I didn't see when that was suffered but it may be that that sort of spurred him on a little bit Lloyd does eat a nice shot coming in there. Oh, good, good right by Hall. Lovely right hook from Hall. Taylor seems to take it well enough. Lands a nice jab of his own. So how did you score that one then? As you just sort of hinted and alluded to, there's an argument you give that for Hall. I think it wasn't a particularly pretty round. But Taylor didn't seem to get much of his own work away. Not physically troubled as such, but I think to his credit, you to reiterate what we've just been saying yeah. the holes he's worked hard there he looks like he's coming to win he's not taking it lying down at all so again referring back to what you were saying before as well Andy it's the sorry Andrew <laughs> Andy or Andrew <laughs> <laughs> but you want to fight those different styles as you go through your career to prepare you for all the different styles you're going to be fighting because you've got a pressure fighter here you, you, when you're fighting the title level you know they can fight in multiple different styles depending on where they are having their success so you've got to be prepared for different types of three different opponents on one night when you're fighting for a title potentially 100 percent and i think from the sort of the the talk in the gym the, there's every confidence that mark will step up to that and undoubtedly at some point in his career he's going to be in a 50 50 fight or a fight where it's billed as closer than this and yep. he can maybe think back to tonight and think okay someone's on, on my chest all night what do I need to do differently what can yeah. I do to get out of that so it's a bit of a cliche but he's going to learn a lot more from that round than if he'd blown out Hall in the first absolutely oh, lovely uppercut again Beautiful from shot. Taylor obviously before I'm mentioning the the lack of the, the pop in the jab when you're an orthodox boxer fighting against a southpaw You've got to be careful with the jab as well because you can be you can be countered. Yeah, I think in terms of um, well, regardless of the stance as well, I think a lot of local boxers can have the skills but don't necessarily have that power to to be able to step up to a higher yeah. level. I'm not saying that about Taylor at all because just as um, talking, he's landed a beautiful uppercut there again. And as I say, I think not predicting the game plan but he does seem quite content to let Hall come in and try and walk him onto one of yeah. those heavier shots the few instances there where he's planted his feet as Hall's coming in and caught him very cleanly indeed 
But because Hall's come in with ambition, he's doing what he has to do. He first two rounds weren't going his way. He had to he had to start pressing more, he had to start putting more pressure on. This is it, he could have covered up and been happy to survive, but he's he showed great heart here, Hall. He certainly earned this purse tonight. As it should be. As it should be. It's almost like the bull in the matador in there it at is, the moment. I'm not sure how many uh, clean shots Hall's landing, but he's, he's barreling in there. It's been a bit of a better round for Taylor, this one, than the third, though, for me. Yeah, definitely. He's just that split second ahead of him in this one, I think. He's, he's landing as he's coming in. Yeah. He's moving around a bit more. Just again Ooh. there. And it's a lovely right hand, followed up with an uppercut. And Taylor deserves credit. He's moving his feet a little more than he was in the third. Yeah, he's adapted. And that's allowing... Yeah, exactly that, exactly that, Phil. He's adapted. It's allowing him to, to be first to the punch. To land the cleaner work. And from Matt Jobs and Colin Taylor in the corner there, if you've got... A a boxer that listens to you in between rounds and then goes and Taylor's landed two or three clean shots there well, this, I mean we've seen it obviously um, at a national level likes of Chris Eubank Jr who seemingly doesn't want to listen to anyone in the corner yeah. from a trainer's perspective you're going to be delighted with the way Mark Taylor's responded in that fourth round yeah. some of the cobwebs really <laughs> Taylor gets it. Looks like the third round was the level one there for you there, Andy. I can't see any other way of scoring that. And it's obviously nice to see the referee agrees with us. Yeah, the referee got it right. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he agreed with us. 